Welcome everyone to this lecture by Learn Civil Engineering on the bulk modulus of fluid. We had already defined bulk modulus in a previous lecture, but here we will be looking at it and its derivation in more detail, with an example question at the end to test your understanding. As was mentioned in the previous lecture on the physical properties of fluids, bulk modulus, denoted with an uppercase K, is the degree of compressibility of a fluid. All fluids are compressible to some extent. Compression occurs when an external normal force is applied to the fluid, which is sufficient enough to result in a reduction in the fluid's volume. That being said, the compressibility of liquids and gases varies a great amount. That is, gases are easily compressed, whereas liquids are very difficult to compress and require very large applied forces to induce even the slightest compression. Consider the situation of a simple fluid-filled piston. The piston head initially applies a downward normal force of magnitude F to the fluid of volume V inside the piston, and at some interior point, indicated by the dot, the fluid has pressure P. The applied force is then increased to F plus change in F, which compresses the fluid, reducing its volume to V minus change in V. If the piston has a cross-sectional area A, the increase in force, change in F, gives rise to a uniform increase in pressure, where change in pressure is equal to change in force over area throughout the entire fluid. This is known as Pascal's principle. That is, the change, i.e. the increase in pressure, occurs equally at all points within the fluid volume. Hence, an increase in internal pressure, change in P, is required to reduce the fluid's volume by change in V. The bulk modulus of the fluid can then be defined as K equals V over change in V times by change in P. The fluid's mass must be conserved. That is, the fluid's mass must be the same before and after the compression. Hence, it follows that if there is a decrease in the fluid's volume during compression, there must be a corresponding increase in fluid density. If rho is the fluid's density before compression, and rho plus change in rho is the density after compression, the corresponding increase in density, change in rho, is given by change in rho is equal to change in V over V times by rho. Therefore, bulk modulus can also be defined as K equals rho over change in rho times by change in P. Bulk modulus has dimensions of m l to the minus 1 t to the minus 1 and SI units of kilograms per meter per second squared or newtons per meter squared or pascals. The concept of bulk modulus is almost exclusively applied to liquids only. Gases are so easily compressed that the value of bulk modulus is not constant but it is proportional to the pressure and so varies greatly. So now that we have reviewed the theory behind bulk modulus, let's have a look at an example to test our understanding. Water has bulk modulus K equals 2.1 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons per meter squared. Calculate the change in pressure needed to increase the density of water by 0.1%. Pause the video here and have a go at this problem yourself. Now that you've had a chance to attempt this question, let's work through it now. Here, we want to increase the density of the water by 0.1%. So we can write that the change in rho is equal to 0.001 rho. And additionally, we are told that the bulk modulus of water, K, is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared. Taking the equation from the previous section, K equals rho over change in rho times by change in P, we can rearrange it such that change in P equals change in rho over rho times by K. Substituting in our values for the change in density and the bulk modulus, we get that the change in P is equal to 0.001 divided by 1 times by 2.1 times 10 to the 9, which equals 2.1 
times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per meter squared, or pascals. Therefore, the change in pressure needed to increase the density of the water by 0.1% is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the power of 6 pascals. If this pressure was acting over a circular area with a diameter of 10 centimeters, the corresponding force would be approximately 1.7 tons, which is comparable to the weight of a small car. This shows that even very large pressures applied to a liquid result in very small decreases in volume, or increases in fluid density. Therefore, we usually treat liquid as being incompressible. This has been a lecture by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this lecture useful at all, please show support by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.